The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. The field of a square pair of coils can be found by using the B.O. Savar Law. The pair is often called a Helmholtz coil when the windings are connected so that the currents produce axial fields that reinforce. It can then be used to make a relatively uniform field in the mid-region, which is accessible for experiments. The Biot-Savar superposition integral can be used to find the field at the observer coordinate R. Its evaluation amounts to a summation of the field contributions from each of the differential size current elements at the source coordinate R prime. Our square coils are composed of connected straight line current segments, or current sticks. The Biot-Savar law is used to find the field at an arbitrary observer position R associated with each current stick. Because the individual current sticks do not represent the solenoidal current density at its ends, the magnetic field derived is of physical significance only if used in conjunction with other current sticks that together form a continuous current distribution. Each of our square coils is composed of four connected current sticks. The magnetic field at point P is found by a summation of fields from each stick. Each coil has n turns, carrying a current I, with sides of length 2D. The current I in each coil is in the same direction, so that the magnetic field induced by each coil reinforce along the minus Z axis. For the direction of current shown, the right-hand rule shows that the axial magnetic field is in the minus z direction. Because of the axial symmetry, the fields along the z-axis induced by each of the sides of the coil at z equal d are the same. Evaluation of the Biot-Savar law for both square coils therefore gives this variation of the axial magnetic field as a function of axial position z. The first term is due to the coil at z equal d. The coil at z equal minus d makes a similar contribution, except that the term 1 minus z over d is replaced by 1 plus z over d. In the experiment, the axial field produced by currents in the two square coils is probed by means of a Hall magnetometer. The output is connected to the vertical trace of a high persistent scope. The probe is mounted on a motor-driven carriage that is attached to a potentiometer in such a way that there is an output voltage proportional to the horizontal position of the probe. This is used to control the horizontal scope deflection. The result is a trace that follows the predicted z-dependence of the magnetic field along the symmetry axis. Here are our square coils, each with 50 turns and sides of length 45 centimeters. The axial magnetometer probe is mounted on this carriage to record the Z component of magnetic field. Before we apply current to the coils, we have compensated for the small part of the Earth's magnetic field that is in the horizontal direction by zeroing the magnetometer. The Earth's magnetic field is essentially vertical with a strength of about a half a gauss and could contribute a slight error to the measurement if not accounted for. A current of two and a half amperes is applied to the coils. We have placed the theoretical variation of the magnetic field versus position Z as a solid line directly on the oscilloscope screen. Let's see if the scope trace follows this theoretical curve. We have adjusted the scope vertical gain so that the display matches the theoretical waveform at one position, 
We'll see if the scope trace follows the shape of this theoretical curve. We'll check the field magnitude later. The probe is initially here. We now turn on the probe carriage. The scope horizontal gain has been adjusted so that the horizontal deflection of the scope matches the Z position of the probe. The magnetic field is largest directly under a coil. Now the left one at z equal minus d. And is fairly uniform in the central region between coils with a minimum at the center, z equals zero. The field increases again to a maximum under the right coil at z equal d. And decreases in the region outside the coils. Let's compare the theoretical and measured field magnitude at z equals zero midway between the coils. We bring the carriage back to the center, z equals zero. Full scale deflection is 10 gauss. We measure a magnetic field of about 2.4 gauss. Let's compare to the predicted value. With 50 turns, a current of 2.5 amperes, and a half side dimension of 22 and a half centimeters, the predicted magnetic flux density is 2.6 gauss. To convert from Teslas to gauss, we have multiplied by 10,000. We measured 2.4 gauss. In our Helmholtz coil experiment, the current in each coil was in the same direction, so that the axial magnetic fields from each coil reinforced. With the current reversed in the left coil, the axial magnetic fields of each coil are oppositely directed and cancel in the center. This results in a sign reversal for the field contribution from the left coil. Now the magnetic field is an odd function around z equals zero. It is zero in the center as expected. This reversing switch reverses the direction of current in the left coil. Let's see how the measured field compares with the prediction. We have aligned the zero field lines and adjusted the vertical gain to match the waveform at one point. We now turn on the probe carriage. The field is a negative maximum under the left coil. is zero at the center and reaches a positive maximum under the right coil. Using a pair of square coils, we have demonstrated the power of the Biot-Savart law in predicting the magnetic field distribution. Given the distribution of current and given that there are no effects of magnetizable materials, this law gives precise predictions.